Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at the Cinda 7-color backlit wireless keyboard. This is model ISJ-DJC03. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful, I'll put a link to this in the description on Amazon, and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So on the side here it says it's Scissor Switch Ultra Thin Keyboard, multimedia keys, seven color. So what drew me to this keyboard was that it has a dock on it that you could put your phone or your tablet on. And this also supports up to four different devices using Bluetooth. So it's a very versatile keyboard. So here we have the user manual. Here are some specs. It says Bluetooth version, Bluetooth 5.1 keyboard, working range is 10 meters, the battery capacity is 1600 milliamp hours, the working current without the backlight is 1.5 milliamps, the working hours without backlight is 1000 hours, so that's I think around 40 days, the working current with the brightest backlight is 200 milliamps, working time with the brightest backlight is 8 hours, charging time is 3 hours, Standby time is 2100 hours. The backlight sleep mode is after two minutes of non-use and the keyboard sleep mode is after 30 minutes of non-use. So this comes with the backlit wireless Bluetooth keyboard, the Type-C charging cable, and the user manual. So this talks about the LED indicator light. When you press the function lock, the LED one flashes green. When you press caps lock, LED two flashes green. When you press num lock, the LED 3 flashes green. LED 4 flickers red slowly if the keyboard is under low battery. LED 4 flashes red light while charging and will be off if fully charged. So let's take a look at the keyboard before I get any further into this so we can test these functions here. Some packing foam. And here's the USB-C charging cable. Seems to be about one meter long. So the feature that intrigued me with this was this little slit here that's meant to hold a phone or a tablet. Now I was skeptical because I figured this would just flop over, but this is very heavy. It's not lightweight and flimsy. It just feels very, very significant. You can really tell you're holding it in your hand. It just, that's a really great feel. So I have a tablet here. This is an iPad. So I do have a kind of slim case thing on here. So if I open it, see if it fits in there, it does fit with that. Here I have an iPhone SE that fits in there also. You can see the angle here. This one fits a little tighter, so it's a little more upright. This one tilts back a little bit. This has no case on it. If I had a case on it, it would probably fit in here a little bit more upright. And this is an iPad Pro first gen. I have an Android tablet. This is not going to fit because I have a case on it that I let my kid use. Now, if you take it out of the case, it fits in there very well. So if you had a slimmer case on this, it would potentially fit in here. Actually, yeah, it would fit upright though because it's a little bit wider here in the center. So if you have a phone that has a little bit thicker case on it, it could fit in that area. So this will work upright, but with this case on it, it won't work horizontal. So this does have a multicolor backlight. I'm going to turn my camera light off. It's it. So first we need to turn it on. So there's a power switch here. Let's take a look at the physical thing a little bit more here. So we do have rubber feet on the four corners. The charge port is right there. Here is the profile of the keyboard. You can see it's raised up towards the back. Now let's turn it on. Now I haven't charged this and you usually should charge things. So hopefully this will work well. I, I imagine it'll have enough charge. Usually things do. It says press and hold the function key and press the shift key to adjust the brightness of the backlight from low, mid, high, or off. So function is down here and then we have shift. Oh, and it's wanting to me to press the right shift. Okay. So that is on, but it's not very easy to see. I'm going to shut the overhead lights off. Okay, so this is off. That's low, medium, and high. So this is kind of hard to show on camera, but it is easy to see in person. So I can see these lit up here in person. So I could probably use this on low or medium. I could use it on high too, but I don't know that I need it that high. The lower it is, the longer your battery is going to last. Okay, so I've locked my exposure. So this is low, medium, and high. Then we want to do function enter to change the color. So here we have red, green, blue, yellow, looks like a cyan, purple, and that's maybe white. Yep, and then red. So I really like that red color. I think that's really neat. I think that could be really nice at night when you don't want to hurt your night vision. Although you're generally looking at a screen that's probably gonna be brighter than the keyboard. So green is nice too, it's very visible.
So lights like that don't always come out on video. I put some still photos in there because sometimes still photos work better for viewing those types of things. So back to the manual here, it says do not squeeze, twist, or hit the keyboard. Do not put this in the microwave or near a strong magnetic field. Prevent splashing, use in a dry environment, and use a soft dry cloth to clean the keyboard. And turn it off when you're not using it. Make sure it's fully charged before use. Make sure your keyboard is in working range, 11 yards. Make sure you have turned on the Bluetooth function when you connect. Make sure you have successfully paired to the tablet. Clean up the Bluetooth pairing device on your laptop and try repairing. Do not try pairing multiple keyboards to the same device. So this is how we connect. It says how to connect to my device to two, three, or four. So let's try pairing this. So I was showing off the little dock here, but I don't have it in the dock because it's easier for me to film it at this angle. So I'm in the Bluetooth device on my iPad. I'll hit function and then the Bluetooth one button. Then I'll hold down the Bluetooth one button. Now this light is flashing here. And it says Bluetooth 5.1 keyboard. I'll tap that. Okay, we're connected. Let me pull back a little bit. I'll see if I can get this in this. I'll see if I can change my angle a little bit. I think we have most of it there. So if you have a Bluetooth keyboard connected to your iPad, you can hold down the command tab and switch between apps just like you can on a Mac. So I can go to pages here. I can type, this is a test. Then I can go and use the shift arrow keys. I can say command copy or command C for copy, command V for paste. You can use a lot of the same commands you can use on a computer on a tablet. So back behind here, I have a Mac. So I'll open up the system preferences here. So I'll go to Bluetooth here. On the keyboard, I'll press function, Bluetooth two, and then I'll hold that button down. And we've disconnected from the iPad. So if we go to the Mac here, this should show up. We'll hit connect. Okay, it brought up the keyboard assistant. So I'll hit continue here. I'll press the Z key and the question mark key. I'll hit done. So that's set up. And on here I can type command tab, just like we did before. I can hit command space, I can search for pages. We can say this is a test, arrow keys and everything work. So this is working with the Mac now and not the iPad. But if I go back down here, I can press function Bluetooth one, and we're back on the iPad. Function Bluetooth two, we're on the Mac. So this will support up to four different devices. And this is compatible with iOS. So you have iPhone, iPads, Macs, PCs, Linux. You could use this on say a Fire TV. Anything that works with Bluetooth keyboards should work with this keyboard. So these days that includes a lot of devices. It might work with some TVs even that support Bluetooth keyboards. So a cool thing about this is say you have this working with your iPad and your computer and you have say one or two free Bluetooth things on there. So what you could do is you could assign one of these to your Fire TV. So during the week you might be using this for work and then Friday evening you go into Fire TV and you're logging into some app and ask for a password you can hit that function Bluetooth three and you can type in your password on this and then you go back to work Monday, function Bluetooth one, you're back to using it with your regular PC. So you could assign these Bluetooths, if you don't have anything you have to use for them daily, you could assign them to media devices, things like that. I like that it has four devices on here, it's very versatile. I'm guessing most people won't need all four, but they're there if you need them. So this keyboard has an inverted T for the cursor keys, I like that. It has a numeric keypad over here. So if you're typing in numbers, you have that ability. It also has the media keys and those I'm guessing will work on the iPad. Let's try those. So I'll do function, I'm not on the iPad. Let me go on the iPad. There we go. Ah, I don't need to do function for those. So you can see right up here, I'm adjusting the volume we can do brightness with this, like you can play, you can mute. There's lots of options there. So I think this is a very versatile keyboard. I like this slot here. This would be great for people who travel in hotels. This would be great for RVs. Uh, you might have a PC in your RV, but you might also use a tablet or your phone. Having multiple inputs here, you can switch back and forth between the different devices. So that's the Sinda 7 Color Backlit Wireless Keyboard. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.